A major assignment in this course is Kaggle. So Kaggle, if you're not familiar with it, is essentially like the Super Bowl or the World Cup, if you prefer, for data scientists and really machine learning and, and AI. There's just so many different things going on now in Kaggle. Kaggle, when I first got into it a while back, was mostly tabular data, just traditional classification and regression. Now tabular data is actually kind of a minority on Kaggle, and it's much more computer vision and other things. Also, large language models have certainly made inroads into Kaggle. So let's take a look at Kaggle. You can see it here. You can click on the your profile. So when you register for Kaggle, you'll have a profile. You will need to register with Kaggle to complete the Kaggle assignment. And you'll have your option to compete either individually or as, as a team. I will probably earlier than this point have sent out a sign-up sheet so that you're able to choose your groups and teams if you so desire. Kaggle is often done in, as teams, so I certainly want to, want to stay with that approach. So if you look at my profile here, you can see my job title. It's a little out of date. And I joined 10 years ago. I was very active for that first year and very inactive for the last nine years. So you can see you can earn achievements in Kaggle. There are multiple levels. You start out as a contributor. That's really, you have not earned enough of these, these gold badges, gold medals, I guess, or, well, they're, I have one gold medal there and then bronze medals. If you have below the threshold, you're just a contributor. In the competitions, I have two bronze medals, so that makes me an expert, and I, there's some cutoff. I think it's five for data sets. I tend to upload all of my class data sets to Kaggle, so I, I get some, I get some cred, credibility cred, street cred, there. Now, if you, if you look at, let's see, so if I pull up like my competitions, I have done, th I have hosted 18 competitions. So these are all of the competitions that I have um, created for, for the students. And then I've also competed myself in three competitions. So that's the one that I did the best in. I was 250, 225 out of uh, 3295, so seven. That, that was a tremendous amount of work. Um, and then Auto Group did, that was my first one, did top 10%, yeah. And Mercedes, not so good. So that is, that is my efforts, at least in Kaggle. I have had students go on to actually become Kaggle masters and do really quite well with this. Some people really enjoy this. And this can be a good resume piece because certainly most, most of the Kaggle grandmasters that I've seen absolutely go on to work for what you'd call Magnificent Seven companies. I know NVIDIA has hired quite a few people from, from there. So let me show you one of the competitions. Now these are competitions for the deep learning class. The competition that we'll have this semester, I haven't put the data together just yet, and this video will probably last beyond this, this semester, so I'm not gonna necessarily talk about the current one. You can see part five to see what the current competition is. But it will be something definitely that is more along the lines of generative AI. Now, generative AI is what produced the data set or for these, yeah, because all of these images, they're, they're people. They are AI generated. They were generated by something called stable diffusion, which is absolutely in the realm of generative AI. And stable diffusion, you give it prompts. And I gave it a whole bunch of prompts to generate a variety of different people, different genders, different ages, different ethnicities. And your task in this one was to predict how old they were, because that's part of what the prompt told it. 
Now, it's, it can generate children. It can't generate infants too well, and it does it... After about age 90, everybody kind of looks the same, maybe in real life too, but in, in, in Kaggle, or in uh, stable diffusion, certainly. I will mention one interesting aspect too. All these people, at, they're, they're all at different sort of angles. Some are further apart. Some of them, when I generated it, I, had, I ran an obscenity filter as well because some of these, some of them had wardrobe malfunctions and we'll, we'll just leave it at, we'll leave it at that. There were about five wardrobe malfunctions that were solidly at, the, I guess, the PG level of US movie ratings. Maybe PG-13. Uh, but anyway, you can download the data sets here and the leaderboard, this is where you can see all of the teams competing. So mostly the teams did well. An individual got the, the sixth position. And you can see the number of entries. So different, different students and groups tried at various various levels. So really the only thing you'll win with this, because the real Kaggles, you win money. But here, this I could write you a really good LinkedIn endorsement or letter of recommendation if you're if you're one of the top teams of this Kaggle competition. The other important thing for these is notebooks. So if you go to code, you can run the code completely inside of Kaggle. Kind of like the the Google Colab notebooks, except the, it's running literally in Kaggle. There's some advantages to this because this lets you, you don't have to download the data set. It's just right there. So you can see examples of some of these notebooks. And in future parts of this, I'm going to show you how to run code in notebooks. The assignment for this class does require you to, you, to present things in a very Kaggle-like format. So you can see it is a notebook. It can be ran inside of Kaggle. You would click edit and edit it. You can use any code that you like in this. Uh, probably if you find code somewhere that you're reusing, decide it. I will provide you with a starter application just to, to get you going on this. But that is, that is Kaggle. And there's been quite a few assignments already from the seven years that I've been teaching this class. So some of the links that you you might want to look at, so Kaggle top users, if you click this, it will take you to here. So this is these are the top, top people. Well, I am not the top person. It puts you at the top. Um, but you can see the little, those are their grandmasters. And really, there's always a lot of new blood in here, so to, so to speak. And the current top Kaggle person, HYD, not familiar with them, not affiliated with any, any particular company, but has done, has done quite well. Yeah, the number, the number two. I don't know if these are the real pictures from like that first one. It might have been a child of the, of the person, but who knows? Um, they get they get younger all the time. This is the uh, the number two person, and from Nvidia, which does does not surprise me at all. You can see like it, it shows you there. So this person is a notebooks grandmaster, and you can see the various levels. This is for notebooks, so contributor master. Um, for competitions, so an expert. I have two bronze medals, so I have just yay met the bare minimum there to be a master. For me to go up to a, I'm sorry, for an expert, I've met the minimum for expert. And then um, for master, it's one gold medal and two silver medals. So that's, and then for grandmaster, you've got to get a gold medal, you gotta get five, and then one solo gold medal. And these are for all the different ones, like data sets, Three bronze medals get you an expert. I, I definitely got to, got to that, so that is that is useful. So the way Kaggles are scored, you've got the entire data set. So the original data set that is sent to Kaggle has X's and it has Y's. The X's could be images, they could be text, they could be anything. What Kaggle does 
is they break it into a training set. You can see that here. The training set, they give you the whys. But the private, the holdout set, you just get the X's. This is what you're evaluated on to put you on the leaderboard. And just to make sure that you don't overfit it, they have a private and they have a public leaderboard. The public leaderboard is what you're initially rated on, and that's maybe half of it, usually maybe a quarter of it. And you don't know these Y's. They're held back from you. You have the X, but then they evaluate you based on, based on that, that, the data that's in there. Now, at the very, very end, it flips, and then you're evaluated on the private, and you never see the private. You don't see that till the very end. That prevents you from what they call overfitting the leaderboard. And then you, you need to basically prepare a submission. So you use all of the X's that you have here in your test set that they give you. You generate the Y's and then you submit the Y's. And the submission looks kind of like this. This is an ID, the passenger ID. I'm using the Titanic data set here. And then a zero or one indicating if that person lived or died. Now there are a number of sample large language model Kaggle competitions. I have some links to there that to them down here. You can see like there's one that challenged you to create models to teach it to play the 20 questions game where you think of some item and your opponent can ask you 20 questions about it and they should be able to guess what the item is by then. Thank you for watching this video and if this was useful please give me a like, uh, follow, subscribe the, to the channel so that you don't miss any more of this course or my other machine learning projects. Thank you for watching.